Guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you. Why does Sweden keep burning books? Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about why there's Qurans that have been burnt so much here in Sweden. I'm going to have to talk about some legal issues here. So I'm going to go in and try to do that. I am not like a professional legal expert, but I am a professional American living in Sweden. So just keep that in mind. And I'm going to try to do my best to start at the beginning first. Sweden has some very strong uh, freedom of expression and freedom of protests. And in the current laws that we have in Sweden, it is legal to burn a Quran. But it's also interesting because Sweden has like hate speech laws. So it starts to kind of become a little bit of a gray area from an American looking at the situation. And you'll see as I later go on uh, when we talk about this issue, because um, we had a guy in Easter and his name was Rasmus. I won't say any more of his name because I don't want to give him any more attention to that. But uh, Rasmus was actually a Danish and Swedish citizen, which was one of the reasons he kept coming to Sweden was he, I think, had a dad that was Swedish. And so it allowed him to kind of be in both countries so he couldn't be banned. But basically, Denmark had had enough of this guy uh, stirring things up that they ended up banning him from like any type of protest. But I don't think Sweden knew who this guy was so much when it started out. So he kept getting permission to burn Qurans in different areas. Now, the thing is, he didn't just go like burn a Quran just like outside his house or something. He would specifically go to uh, Muslim communities here in Sweden with the sheer goal of inciting violence. Fast forward to 2022 and the desecration of Islam's holy book by another man has sparked some of the worst rioting Sweden has ever seen and begun a debate over freedom of expression, a pillar of Sweden's constitution ahead of the general elections in September. Politicians in Stockholm have argued for laws to be changed to give police powers to stop demonstrations like Polydon's. And unfortunately, some young men got upset and allowed themselves to lose themselves and cause violence. In link shipping, it was crazy. It was like, the scenes I saw online was just insane. The amount that it interrupted, uh, police got hurt. Um, in North Shipping, I believe, when I was watching a live stream there, actually one person was shot. It got so bad. Uh, so, And then it just started to happen all around the country. But the thing is, he kept getting permission to do it due to the legal issues around it, saying that you can't ban uh, protests. So this started to happen. Um, and the problem is this was with Rasp. Personally, I just want to say this. Personally, I, feel, I believe that if you are burning a religious book like right outside a Muslim community, to me, that's kind of a form of hate in a sense. But I also being an American looking at how you can burn like an American flag and it, probably in America, this would be legal. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's happened like we have, you know, crazies in America and everything like that. So... But anyways, this keeps happening in Sweden. It gets to the point, I think, where even the police start to get fed up because the argument was this. It was costing Sweden like a ton of money uh, to police this because I always believed, okay, you have the right to protest, but you don't have the right to police protection because in my mind, Rasmus was using this to get people upset and angry and he was using this to further his social media brand, really. And I also believe that if you look at Rasmus and you follow the money, some of it's going to lead to Russia. Uh, I have no doubt about that, though. You'd be shocked how many people in the forest to forest right that, one, already are pro-Russia, and two, actually have some type of Russian finance going on. So I'm just saying. Because uh, when this happened, uh, one of the times that Rasmus burned the Quran, it was like right in front of the Turkish embassy. And let's just say we've been trying really hard to get back into NATO after that situation. Well, now we're going to fast forward to, like, the present day. And so I'll explain, like, they kind of got fed up with Rasmus and he wasn't allowed to get, like, so much police protection anymore. I can't think he's done it in a while. But instead, we had a Iraqi citizen uh, who uh, wanted to burn a Quran outside of the biggest mosque in Stockholm. And from what I understand, this all went to, like, legal courts where they decided that they weren't allowed to ban him from protesting but in stockholm right now you're not allowed to burn anything on fire that was specific you're not allowed to burn anything on fire especially because of uh there's like a forest fire warning all through sweden right now but the swedish law also says that just because someone's breaking the law during a protest doesn't mean 
that you can necessarily stop it if you're the police. It wouldn't be legal then. But it is legal to charge someone with a crime after the fact. So this guy goes, again, has the whole police protection thing, lights it on fire outside the mosque. Uh, I, from what I heard, you can hear a lot of uh, older Muslim men telling y the younger men to come inside, don't get upset, because the whole goal is to get a reaction. I mean, the whole goal is to get these people upset. A provocative act that risks further damaging Sweden's chances of joining NATO. This protester filmed outside Stockholm's central mosque, held up a Quran, only to tear up its pages, wipe his shoes with it, and light it on fire. That man has now been charged by police with agitation against an ethnic or national group. But allowing such an inflammatory protest has prompted a strong reaction from Turkey's foreign minister, who called the act despicable. From what I understand, there wasn't a lot of major incident, but when the incident was over, they charged the guy with two counts of a hate crime because the argument is if, if you had it done outside of a mosque, that would be considered to be a hate crime. But then that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because, like, why like, why didn't they say the same thing to Rasmus? So it kind of feels like looking at this situation in Sweden, this is one of those issues where I believe, like, the law hasn't changed or, like, th this wasn't a problem before in Sweden where this was happening so much. So no one really knew the situation and suddenly people are, are trying to incite violence and what do you do? So... What I do know for sure is this is probably going to hurt Sweden's uh, relationship with getting into NATO again with Turkey. But I guess from the argument I want to make to people that are watching this from the outside, because like this is a situation where literally the law in Sweden says that this is OK. There are some laws that say you can't burn it in certain places, but it's still kind of a gray area that seems to be getting decided in the courts. And this is an issue now that's still kind of being fighted in, in the courts of what's okay to protest and how you do it. And I'm not here to make the complete answer. I just want to explain that in a lot of cases here in Sweden, this hasn't really been like uh, something that even like a ton of Swedes are behind. I don't think this is like a very small minority of people doing this. But the law just doesn't allow for it to be stopped. So it's just kind of one of those weird things where the law allows it. So I don't know how it is in other European countries completely, but it's kind of a weird le legal loophole. This is what's been happening. So that's just my thoughts. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think on this issue. Please let me know below, and I will see you in the next video. Hey,